We are very happy to have um, our missionaries with us tonight, brother and sister Hajduk from uh, the country of Croatia and also Serbia, and uh, they are coming right now to minister uh, to us, and we are so happy that they are here. Would you make them feel welcome at East Wind Pentecostal Church? God bless you, Brother Hajduk. Amen. I'm going to make you like me in three seconds. One, two, you may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Brother Myers, uh, for having us. Bishop Myers, I appreciate you. If you ever wondered what do they do all over the world and what do they, who do they minister, who do they win, uh, what, what do those people look like, uh, they are chubby and crazy. You believe one of those things now, but soon you will believe the other one too. Amen. My name is Radovan, it means joyful, and Hajduk means bandit or outlaw, highwayman, murderer, all that good stuff. And, uh, but I go by Dado, D-A-D-O, and that means baby of the family. And I'm, I'm an oxymoron uh, incarnated. There's a lot of facets of me, and, and if, you, uh, uh, if you want someone to uh, defend you in a street fight, I'm here for you. But if you want to buy uh, some, some drawings that I do of butterflies, bees, and, and uh, dragonflies, uh, I'm your man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The world needs Jesus. Amen. When I was three years old, my daddy decided to burn me alive with gasoline in our house. And my 14-year-old babysitter rescued me from him. He came out, found us, and found my mom. And I watched him beat my mom. And I was only three years old. But it was the day I started hating all men and all neighbors, everybody. I hated everybody. I hated especially people who said, my daddy bought me this, my daddy bought me that, and uh, took me here, took me there. I, I, I was very, I grew up very, very aggressive. I've been in over 200 street fights many times with uh, 10 and more opponents. Not that I could fight really good, but they knew if I grab a hold of one of them, he's done for. My mom, afraid that I'm going to grow up to be a, uh, uh, drunk and, and, and uh, abusive like my daddy was, uh, she beat me with kitchen knives over my head. She would hold the handle of the knife and, and hit me 10 to 15 times on, over the top of my head. And I was not allowed to raise my hands or defend myself in any way. If I did that, she would say, what a horrible child you are that you would raise your hand on your mama. And, and she would put the blade uh, the tip of the knife to my chest and, and walk me uh, to the wall. And she would tell me, she would curse me. She would curse me with cancer. She would curse me with all kinds of disease. And she was into all kinds of witchcraft. So until I got saved at age 17, I would uh, turn off the uh, light uh, in my room and I would jump across and then I would cover myself with the blanket because I felt the presence of the evil. And uh, I would... Uh, uh, when I, as I was 12, 13, uh, it was the time when I started attempted suicides, and when I uh, could escape my mom, I would climb on the rooftop of our shed, and I would uh, cry out to God, I did not know in socialist, communist country, in total generational godlessness, I imagine that God is good, that he loves me, and that he has future for me. I imagine that he's going to give me power that I will be able to overcome being like my mom and my dad. That I will not be myself anymore, yet I will be myself even more. <laughs> Amen. When you die to this world, when you die to the traditions and habits of, 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 that are just evil and, and, and things of darkness, uh, you fully live. You live abundant life. And I thank God that seven, uh, in 1994, a woman came to our house. 1993, a 74-year-old woman came to our house and you know when you're full of the Holy Ghost you kind of skip all the how are you doing honey you know how's how's the weather she just came in and said what's wrong and my mom started crying we haven't had food for three days now and uh, 
what happened is that this lady got all excited because missionaries and this American church brought a pile of bags of baking uh, flour. 25 kilograms, that's about 55 pounds. And we were wiping our tears because my mom will be able to bake some bread in time of war. In time when mafia were, was in control over everything and everything was so expensive and, and out of reach. And uh, my mom, uh, she made her living by uh, having boyfriends who were married men. But the thing is, uh, it, 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 even that didn't work for her anymore. We were hungry. We were starving. And we needed help. If you want to know where Jesus is, he is at that door of a house that, that, that is uh, all broken down, that they don't have AC, and he's holding a bag of food at the door, and he's about to hang it. And you know how I know he's there? Because if you embody Jesus, if you step where he is, you're going to say, I never felt so Christ-like. You're going to get addicted to loving people, to ministering to people, to reach into people that are unreachable. For years, this elderly lady, she, what happened is she said, Jesus can change your life. She promised me food, but she said, Jesus can change your life. And this was the first time that somebody spoke faith into me, that somebody spoke hope, that told me things are going to get better. Because everybody told me, you're just like your dad, you're just like your mom, you're, you're just you. You're, you're, you're crazy, you're violent, you're good for nothing, you're a nuisance to society. When I came to church, they were like, oh, my word, he's going to steal everything we got. He's going to beat up our church kids. He's going to stab somebody. We know that boy. We know his mother. Better not, better not she come here. You know her reputation. It's funny because they were at that church uh, in my hometown. I was a shock for him, you know, because we want to reach the sinners. But when sinner comes in. Oh, well, not that kind of sinner. But I'm here to tell you that sin is multiplying. That they're using drugs, that the, 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 the brain is out, and, and, and they're not the way hippies used to. You know, just stop whatever they're doing, and they get a shave, and it's not enough to, to get a shave anymore. But you got to love them, you got to counsel them, you, you got to spend time with them more than ever. And it's just getting worse. So who's going to love people like me? You know, there, there are things, and this is where I start getting myself in trouble. There are schools of thought, how are we going to reach the world? And two of those schools of thought is reach to other groups and try to get them on our side somehow. And then the second one is find foreigners in that country. Because they are already familiar with Pentecost. And they are most likely in awe with American church coming to town. They're like, oh yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go to church pastor by my national. I'm going to go to that church because there's an American pastor there. whoop de doo But you know what? There's another way. There's another way. I'm, I'm going to show it to you in the video. I want to embody Christ. But you can embody Christ all you want, and he can be, you, your hands can be his hands, and your eyes, your eyes. But if you sit on your hiney all day and do nothing for God, God is looking for laborers. Many will uh, want to preach. Many want big churches. Many want, want uh, big seminars and, and whatever, and be all over the Twitter and whatever. But not many will labor. We cannot reach the world if we have nothing to do with the world. To, in order to reach Croatians, I have to have the same mutual interest as they do. So I'll meet thousands of people through diet, obviously. <laughs> through my interest in bacon, smoking bacon, obviously. Through my interest in old cars, through my interest in, in art, whatever, I can connect with them. Because you know what they say? Europeans are hard to reach. You know, don't, don't even 
Don't waste your time. You know, they're hard to reach. Well, let me tell you something. Are you blind? Look who is standing before you. A Croatian former Roman Catholic. And there's no such thing in Croatia. Because if you are former Roman Catholic, you are former Croatian too. Because you leave your national identity. You're not going to be welcome to their christenings and their baptisms and their namesake days. Saint, saint namesake days and, and whatever else. You will be ousted. In a Christian country. I mean, 25 churches in 800,000 people town. And I'm talking about Baptists, Lutheran, Methodists, Pentecostals, this kind of Pentecostals, and those kind of Pentecostals, all kinds of Pentecostals. 25. Seven of them shut their doors down in the past two years. They just can't do it. It's pointless. You know what pastors tell me? There are no conversions in Croatia. And I'm like, look at us. And I don't say that boastfully. I say that by faith. Because I had faith and I still have faith. And I will always have faith. Because when I look at the mirror, I see that God can indeed save anyone. So don't tell me someone is out of reach. Don't tell me that gospel doesn't work for all. Don't tell me that they are hard and, 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 and stubborn and, and closed down and quiet in church. You need to come to my church where they sing like they're in a soccer game because our believers there believe if I can sing with all of my heart at the soccer game, I can do it here. And I let them. And I let them. We have planted two churches. They are four and a half hours away. And they are a little bit different in the culture. In one of them we have half former uh, uh, Trinitarian Pentecostals. In the, in the other half is new. And in Zagreb we have all new people. We have more new people in the United Pentecostal Church. Even though we are pioneering missionaries. We have more new people than any church or group out there. And I know they watch me. And I've been saying this for months. Ain't nobody writing to me and saying that's not true. Because it is true. Because it is true. But I'll give out school bags. I'll give out uh, uh, food. There's always pantry in my church. We rent a little, little. Uh, um, uh, it was a former dance club, whatever it was, like, like for, little, for little kids, you know, to learn their gymnastics or whatever. And, and now we do gymnastics for the Lord. And I baptized one man, a, a young man, 23-year-old. He was raised besides Roman Catholic Church, okay? The influence is huge in, in, his, in, his, in his family and in his life. But he started reading Bible. And this is the thing. When they start reading Bible, they are looking for somebody to baptize them in Jesus' name. And while I was busy feeding the poor, while I was busy painting someone's house, in the end, God gives the increase. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how, what, who I'm going to reach. But God wants laborers. I'm not here to sell you how awesome you, I am because I started two churches where there are none. And I have a, a, a number of new people there that, that nobody else can say they have in that kind of area. And in Europe in general, you don't reach indigenous nationals. You don't. But we do. Because... Faith. Give us some kind of program. Come and teach a seminar, you know, two-week seminar. How you do it. You put your work clothes on and I'll show you how it's done. So when we had earthquake six, seven months ago now, I didn't go to oversee. I went to work. And you know what? When you work with people, that's when you connect with them the most. I want people by picking corn in the field with them. That's how you win people. And then God gives us people who we, we didn't even plant. You know, when those three guys had been entrusted the talents. And one with one talent, he, he buried it. And what did he say? He said, I thought you're such master that you reap where you have not sown. What a secret, amazing message in there. 
when we work and labor for God some of us don't labor for God because we think we're not good enough we don't know how to pull it off we don't know what the results gonna come from that so we just do nothing God is looking for laborers Today, in 2021, there are more hours and more energy and more food spent planning than working. God help us. God help us to engage with the global harvest. It ain't going to be angels. ain't going to something open up in the sky and it's going to happen. It's going to happen when the saints of God get a hold of who they are in Jesus Christ and we get to work. Are you ready? I can't see you there. You ready? Thank you. I'm a little traditional. I'll communicate like this. I am the single mother of three. I know how it looks, but please don't condemn me. I need you to reach me. Will you pray for me? Will you speak to me? Be moved by compassion for me. Help me, I'm falling. Does anybody hear me calling now? I'm calling out for help. I'm in too deep to save myself or I save myself or I need. Someone to help me I'm the lawyer you met In the coffee shop I know I seem fine But really I'm not My life is crashing I'm the city you drive through On your way to work Can't you hear my streets crying Full of pain and hurt Send me a preacher Will you reach to me? Please preach to me There's not much time
Amen. God is good. Yes. Amen. And I, I thank you for doing ministry for the uh, poor and needy. Thank you for going out of the four walls of your church, which is a wonderful facility. But there are still people that need to be here, that need to hear the gospel, that need to be part of the body of Christ. And I thank you all who labor. And if you are not part of the ministries of this church, you get on board. Amen. You might not understand at all and how it's going to work out, but that's how God gets the credit. Because if we only do what we understand fully, then that's our effort. But I love when God builds his church. Amen. Amen. After all, we are all here because somebody prayed for us, somebody reached to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you would stand with me for a moment, that may last about two hours. I am long-winded. It is what it is. What can I tell you? I just forget about time. Take it off if it's somewhere, uh, some clock or whatever. I'm just kidding. Actually, I was just kidding when I said I was just kidding. And uh, I, I don't know if you have noticed, but I'm different. And I'm not your average European preacher or Eastern European or Central European, wherever I'm from. Uh, I'm not American preacher. I'm not Canadian preacher, though I'm a citizen of Canada and two more countries. But I'm just me. I can't, I can't be something else. Okay? It, I just, if I do try to be, uh, it, I'm just goofy to, to myself. Uh, you know, I'd rather be goofy to you than to myself. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13th chapter. Some easy stuff for you. I'll be kind. Lord, forgive me for lying. <laughs> Charity never faileth. Verse 8, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for illumination of the revelation of your word in the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. I am not an amen preacher. You can say amen. You can say hallelujah. I don't care what you do. I don't preach for my check. I don't preach for, uh, uh, I don't believe in all that uh, American church culture, you know, Pray, praise to your miracle and build the atmosphere and yell like this when you're preaching and all that good stuff. Do I do get loud? It's just, it's just not my cup of tea. Oh, that was good charge. Do you know what he said? No, but he felt good. I like to walk by faith and not feelings. And it is a trap, my friends. It is very near uh, when you build the atmosphere and the feely. The, you know what, how uh, witches call that, the, the new age stuff? They call it vibrating, you know. They, they vibrate with the universe. I'm not here to vibrate with the universe. I'm not here to, to get a good Feeling. I'm here for God to touch my life, to touch my heart, and to heal me, to revive me, to change me, and to send me. That's what I'm here for. I, I want a genuine move of God. You know, because sometimes musicians, and, and I'm not a musician, but I, I, I did lead worship. I, uh, I can sing, and, and uh, I, I would... Uh, Sometimes a song works, you know. It just works. So the Holy Ghost moves and, and, and people are responding. And then we do the same song again next Sunday. And then next Sunday again. And that, my friend, is called religion. Oh, but we are apostolic. One God. Whoa. 
Oh, we got our religion stuff. You know, we come to the altar out of respect for the preacher or our pastor, and we got a little hip going on, and, you know, with the beat. And then uh, we got the face going on. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I'm here to sing along. Charity never faileth. When you love people with the love of Christ, they will never forget it. Because it may be very likely that is first time somebody showed them charity. Charity is like faith with works. Faith without works is dead. And, and love without action, without acts of love is dead. You can tell your children you love them, but if you don't provide for them, if you're busy online on Amazon watching where an eBay, watching when a, a PlayStation 5 series will come up, and you're busy with that, and you're uh, uh, worshiping video games and, and, and movies and whatever you are into, TikTok or whatever, and, and you're busy with that stuff, you know, um, I love you doesn't mean much. <laughs> charity never faileth you will never fail with people if you love them you can you might not be uh, of much wisdom you might not be very administrative you may not be the best looking but if you love people that is precious and that is so rare because today people love but they love themselves they are consumed with themselves they are unteachable and uninstructable because who are you to tell me? I've read the self-help books. That's the attitude. And let me tell you something. Reflection of what's going on in the streets. It's happening in the church too. It wasn't the communist regime that uh, ran down the church. They went from 10% 100 years ago or 70 years ago. 10% of people were Protestant, uh, uh, Reformed or whatever, Evangelical. 10% now it's 0 0.36. 30 times less. And I think even that number is because we like to speak by faith. That what is happening out there, that spirit comes after us. So it wasn't the regi communist regime that, that, that destroyed the churches. It was Christians who worked for the government. It was, I'm sorry, ministers who were agents and they were a baptist was watching pentecostal who if any americans are coming to his church and, and he was doing that and they were getting favors and that destroyed the church and that is coming here in canada one of my services was canceled because church advertised that i'm coming and they they called them from the government they say you can't have him because he preached in toronto you can't have him in this town that's our away because it's a different zone and you know who tells on us us the concern the, the, you, you're gonna have concerned Christians I'm, I'm just worried that my pastor is making good decisions in, in time and I, I don't think he made a good good decision so I'm gonna call cops on him And that spirit is coming here. So when you look at those people and you say, a bunch of snowflakes, look within. Bunch of liberals. The judgment starts from the house of the Lord. We are busy judging the world, but at the same time, we are being tested. We are being uh, examined by Him. <laughs> he don't think the way we think. He don't love the way we love. He don't forgive the way we forgive. And vice versa. Amen. 
But when there be prophecies, Trump's going to win. Oh, yeah, he's anointed by God to be the president and all that good stuff, you know. And then he doesn't. And then we are like, what do we do with these false prophets among us? Crucify him, stone him. But it's the end of end times, people. It's the end times. Prophecies shall fail. Not with us. We are united to Pentecostals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, God looks upon us and says, oh, yeah, you know, they're, they're special. Mm. That's what we do, you know, when things don't work well. Now, if I start shouting, we are one God apostolic, we are tongue talking, and you will like, Whoa. religion. <clears throat> Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. This is why a lot of us don't pray in tongues. Oh, but I do. I, I come to people at the altar to pray for. And I say, have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost? They're like, I've been a member here for 30 years. Watch. That's stammering lips for 30 years. I'm surprised you don't stutter. After all that. Da -da 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 -da. You know, these modern pulpits usually. I need some big guy to stand here with me. So I can hide behind him. Any volunteers? <laughs> Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Oh, they, they went into false doctrine. Yeah, because it's end times. The temptation is great. And the dryness is even greater. People are not praying except if they are in a church. But in the end times, it says that one who is restraining him... He has to be taken away for him to come in. Speaking of Antichrist. <gasps> we are certainly not in that time. Because I just bought my new boat. <clears throat> Church on global level has never experienced what we experienced last year. Where governments of the world shut us down they didn't shut restaurants but they shut us down they didn't shut down uh, gambling uh, houses casinos but they shut us down because it is the sign to me of something cooking and people who only prayed in church they were removed. They were out of the way. And the prayer went globally down. Because those people, when you put them on the Zoom and your internet, they're eating soup out of their little bowl and watching the preaching. Why, why would, like, uh, you've been in church for 30 years. Uh, start praying at home now because we need you. I warned you. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. You have amazing ministry. You have amazing, uh, um, what's the word? Uh, uh, legacy of the ministry in this church. Amazing. You have amazing uh, for, for it, my wife said she likes design. She said it, it, somebody did a great job here. You, everything is beautiful. Chairs are cushy. I'm at the right level. Everything is planned perfectly. Professionals plan this sanctuary. But there will come a time when that which is in part, when that which is perfect, we want to have good church. We want to have good music. We want to have good ministry. And sometimes we get disappointed if things don't work out the way we planned. Because sometimes God steps in to kind of, oh, not my God. Well, maybe he doesn't love you. <laughs> because whom he loves, he also corrects. Not me, I'm special. He's been correcting you. You're just stubborn and full of yourself. 
and you have learned to ignore that still small voice. You know why it's still small voice? Because he's not screaming at you yet, but he's about to. You know, people say, and I'm sorry if you lost a loved one. I apologize ahead, but I'm going to say it anyways. And you are not, like, you're not special. I say this everywhere, okay? When I go to heaven, I don't care where Peter is. I don't care where Moses is. When I enter New Jerusalem, no matter how better my life got no matter what camps I attended no matter what preaching I have heard no matter what preaching I have spoken or whatever no matter what kind of experience spiritual experience no matter how I felt after fasting no matter how I felt as I got lost in the Holy Ghost and I danced for hours and I spoke in tongues for hours, no matter how great that experience is it is nothing compared to that which is coming because that which is perfect is coming and that is when we enter New Jerusalem So here it comes. When I come to heaven, I don't care where my wife is. I'll never care where she is. I'm just going to say, I behold the glory of the lamb that was slain for me. You ain't going to take your treasures to heaven. I know this was discussion and they brought it to Jesus. Whose wife she's going to be? Well, nobody's. Because she's going to behold the king. Because these things which are in part. Where you feel lonely and you need a mate. And you need someone to clean and cook for you. You need somebody to comfort you when you're hurting. And you lose a friend. And you can tell your spouse, you're my best friend. That all shall pass away. And a new day is coming. A newer, new world will be created. And we will be partakers of that. And our problem is that we are so earth uh, focused and we want the kingdom now we want the blessing now we want to have good church now that we think that's the top it is not there is more to come there is more to come I don't compare myself to more spiritual than me. I don't compare myself to more sane or proper uh, than, than, than me. I compare myself to Radovan Hajduk when he has entered the glory. So when I'm saved, when I, am, uh, uh, when I, when I uh, believe for healing in my life, uh, I don't imagine Radovan who is here and he's looking good, he's healthy and he can jump do do jumping jacks or whatever like 50 in a minute you know I don't compare myself to that what I have imagined here seek ye first the kingdom of God <laughs> we need the courtier chairs than this that's the kingdom we need a better parking lot asphalt that's the kingdom then we have made it we need a bigger facility then we have made it we, have, we need more churches. We need more preachers. We need this. We need that. But in the end, it's not about us achieving greatness. It is about Him receiving the glory and receiving us into the glory forever and ever more. Because it was easy to believe heaven when I had nothing to eat. It was easy to believe in heaven when my mom would spit in my face and say, Now go to your cult. It was easy when I was rejected and hurt over and over in my church to believe in something greater. But you believe it now when everything is going fine. We have lost our focus. Disciples wanted kingdom now. They wanted earthly kingdom they wanted to be lords with the king of kings and kick out Rome and uh, have Jerusalem as the center of the world 
and be in power and pass judgment. That's what they did. They, 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 you know, they love to be judges, you know, to sit at the gate and judge people all day long because I'm important. I'm, I'm from a certain tribe and I have studied the law. And I'm a judge and people are going to come to me and I'm going to decide their, their destinies. That's how they saw the kingdom. But he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And he also said, where I'm going. And he's going where? To prepare us a home. Nothing in this world can compare to the glory that is coming. And the world, the devil wants us to be lovers of this world. And we love. Oh boy. We love the ministers that are young and with charisma. That are handsome, good looking. That, that, that will teach us how to make friends in seven steps. That preach like this and preach on their stools. And preach with their feet flopping off the platform. And do all kinds of crazy stuff. And we think that's the kingdom. Because they have vision. We think that's the kingdom. And, oh, it's so awesome. Oh. I have people like that come to my church. Some of them go out running. Because after 20 years of being in those flag-waving churches, you know, and praise dancing on the platform thingies, and, you know, uh, fake it until you make it, they come into my church, and they feel the Holy Ghost for the first time. And they're like, what in the world have I been doing all my life? And they are bro heartbroken because they can't leave their worship team. And they don't have what we have. But the devil is coming for what we have. And if we don't have genuine moves of God in our services, in our homes, in our cars, at our workplace. My friends, the dark days are coming. And who is not full of the Holy Spirit? I don't know. I don't know how they're going to make it. I mean, a little COVID came and some did not make it. They got scared. They're not still in church. They were spiritual in church. And I'm sorry for all those that were lost. I'm sorry for all those that got sick. I was sick too. And it's not, it's not a little thing. But we cannot die in fear. We cannot die spiritual in fear. Because we are scared. Of the unseen little thing. Well we believe in the unseen. We believe that things on earth are a reflection of the battle that is going in heaven for you and I. And why? Well devil wants to steal my blessing. Devil wants to do this. Devil wants to do that. Devil doesn't want you to be saved. That's the end result man. It's not all that about you. It's about your soul. I want to say it's not all about your flesh. And your dreams and your desires, no matter how spiritual they may seem right now. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What does a child do? I spake as a child. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's, they're saying Jesus, but they said it so many times. They turn into a whistle. God doesn't want us to pray a repetitious prayer. He doesn't want us to pray like when we first came to the altar and somebody told us, say, thank you, Jesus. And we still are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. After 10 years, after 30 years, 50, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Da da, ma ma, water. Heal me, touch me, bless me. Give me friends, give me this, give me that. 
Oh, we believe in end time revival. We believe in this and that. But I have a problem, you see, that I see. The church, the saints, are not saying, come Lord, come quickly. That's not our attitude. That's not our spirit. Increase my tent. Increase my portion. Do this for me and do that for me. Friends, that is not kingdom. Oftentimes, no matter how good it looks, that may be plan B. Devil wants you to be busy thinking about what God can do for you. And we lose focus because when we get disappointed with this life, which is in part, and we do get sick, and we do have broken marriages, and we do lose a job, and we do lose a friend, what are we going to do then? We're going to pout like little children. God, I have done so many great things for you. Where is the fear of the Lord in this earth today? Where is the humility gone in the world today? Where is the self-sacrifice and, and, and uh, uh, giving someone else a spotlight gone today? When he, where is the giving in which God delights? Giving of a cheerful man. When you study the word, it means one who dances as if they have lost their mind. When was it we've done something for God without calculating how God's going to bless us? Lord, I give you $10 and I believe you're going to increase my portion. You're going to give me $100 back. That is not seeking the kingdom. That is not of God. And I tell churches, don't give me that kind of money. That money is cursed. Woo. But he says, given it shall be given unto you. Yes, for forgiveness. Boy, I want to grow. You ain't going to grow if you don't forgive those who don't deserve it. You ain't going to grow until you forgive those that will never say it. That will never, they're not even alive. God is not going to grow you spiritually. If you come to Lucy and you say, Lucy, I apologize. Now you. <laughs> that is your kingdom. But his ways are mysterious. His ways are such that I can say. Lord thank you that my mama abused me. I had a charismatic lady stand up. Sorry. No offense. Let's say she was Baptist. But she was excellent, charismatic. And she, she got up and she started yelling at me. God will not do something bad. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part. I'm just amazed, reverend. I'm amazed with all the reverends that know everything. And they're so... Uh, People, they're not just preachers, but, but saints. They're so angry, man. They're so angry about that. Like, I would die. It's not like you're going to die for your doctrine. You're going to kill others <laughs> for your doctrine. I am right. I see this. It's in the scripture. Well, then keep your temper down. Be kind. Love, even those who disagree with you, good grief. Yeah, I love the truth. That's why I hate everybody. <laughs> and this, this is the end times. It's going to get worse. People are going to get busy. They're going to spend more time fighting in church and, and criticizing church that they won't have any time left for the sinner. And you can't reach sinner if you don't talk to him, if you don't look at him in the face, if you don't have interaction with him. You ain't going to do it. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even 
as also I am known. So no matter how much revelation we have, it's nothing compared. No matter how holy you may be, it's a dirty rag compared. No matter how blissfully joyful you may be, it's nothing compared to what is coming. And I'll tell you what is coming. They wanted the kingdom now. They were heartbroken. Even as he was being taken in the, in the heavens. After 40 days that he has shown himself to. They still were scared and didn't tell anyone that he's been around for 40 days. That he rose from the grave. And they were like. Okay, we lost you at the cross. We, we just scattered. Peter betrayed you. Like how much do you want us to punish you now? I thought we were best friends forever. I don't want you talking to me. I don't care if it's for 400 years again. I don't want to hear from you anymore. We thought we were kings, man. And you were gone up. He gave him a promise. Of a comforter. The kingdom now. And kingdom here says. You have a boo boo. You don't have a friend. Jesus comfort me. You're sick. Jesus comfort me. That's not what's that all about. It's about the kingdom. When he. The comforter has come come finally on the day of Pentecost something amazing we said they received power but that power came from revelation as the Holy Spirit will lead you into the whole truth you will see that I am the great I am that I am truly Alpha and Omega you will see it for yourself because the presence of the New Jerusalem. You see, I, I, I'm a little advertisement. I, I'm selling little satchels of lavender from Croatia. The Holy Spirit, in our limited understanding, in our timeline, in our battle, constant battle with carnality, the Holy Spirit... Is the only thing if you blaspheme against you cannot be forgiven. Why? Because it is the presence. It is the taste. It is the smell. It is the, the, the uh, 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 visual. It is the emotional. It is revelational and illuminational experience of that which is to come and already is. It is your opportunity to peek into eternity. It is your opportunity. What are you talking about? But don't you remember when you received the Holy Ghost? You were like, there's nothing in this world. Because there is nothing in this world. Because it's not of this world. His spirit rules there. His authority rules there. And one day we will see that he truly is all in all. And we will understand it better by and by. But now we preach about it. Now we sing about it. Now we shout about it. Now we prophesy about it. We don't understand it clearly. But oh, when <laughs> the Holy Spirit moves, something fills the air. Something changes. And it's powerful. And when, when we are full of it, we just want to tell everybody about. It's not about uh, come and be healed. <laughs> It's not about come and become a, a good businessman. It's not about uh, uh, be a better parent. <laughs> you know, those are all good things. But it's about come where I am. There you shall also be. And here is a comfort to you. Kingdom is real. Kingdom is forever. 
what we have here, the healing, the blessing, the, 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 the emotion and the, the revelation, it's only reflection of that which is perfect. That which is perfect reflects on our imperfections. And I want to look at him as he comes from the east. I want to look towards that sun that, that, that to shining in, in all uh, full glory. That light that is coming. That, that every knee shall bow before him. Every tongue will profess now we, we, they don't believe it. And we are trying to believe it. And we are like yo-yo on our path to Him. But I press towards the mark. This is why they sang. The martyrs sang. This is why they rejoiced. As they were put in, in hot oil. As they were sown apart alive. As their children were thrown to wild animals and the gladiators. They looked up. Because they have seen His glory. We say... We we are apostolic. We say we are one God believers. We say we have the Holy Ghost. But are we full of it so much so that we don't love anything in this world as much as we love Him? We don't desire anything of this world as much as we desire Him. We would not die for anything in this world as much and as quicker than for Him. That is what this is all about. Four years ago, I didn't know any of Croatian nationals that are in God, except one woman in Canada. I did not know anyone in Zagreb. I had to bring them to truth. And I'm not bringing them so we would grow. I'm not bringing them so we would be, uh, 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 whatever, respected, admired. I am bringing them because I have seen the glory of my Lord. I love our denomination. I love our churches. I love our pastors. I love our ministers. I have two ministers in Croatia now. I love uh, our saints. And they come from all kinds of walks of life. And I put up with some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. And sometimes we, we're just... So close at giving up and everything. But it's all worth the price. Because I want to see. I don't want to go to heaven and see an empty file. Where, where Croatians should be. Or Slovenians. Or Macedonians. Or, or Hungarians. Or, or, or anyone. I was in Newport Ritchie. Uh, six years ago. Right after a pastor told me. Don't tell on deputation how many people you have. We had one church back then. 17 people. He said, don't tell that to American church. You're not going to get any money from, with that kind of story. <laughs> but I am um, stubborn. So I went to the next church and I said, we have 17 people. The church was over. Altar prayer was over. And a young couple with tears in their eyes. Just streaming down their faces. They come to me and Robert said, Brother, is it true? You have 17 people in your country? I believe God can do it in my country too. Robert Che is on deputation with his wife and three children right now they're in Kentucky I don't care if it's one I don't care if it's two I don't care if it's 200 I hope and pray for tens of thousands a hundred of thousands to be in heaven but every nation and every tongue must hear this truth I want to see them in heaven I want them to have that spirit and that faith that's all worth it for Him. It's all for Him. It's not for us. Ultimately, it's all for Him. He is the King of glory. He is the morning star.
let me say one more thing. We often say, you know, praise and shout. There is room for that. But shouting is not praise. That was praise. Lord's presence dwells in the praises of his. Nope. Israel. And then he goes on to praise the Lord. I love when we get a little wild. But that's not the only thing we can do in the spirit. We can also bind the disease. We can also bind the, the, the demonic attack against our family and against our own selves and our children. And, and, our, and we can bind cancer and, and we can lose health and we can lose peace. I'm not praying like a little child anymore. But I'm praying like a grown up in the Lord. And my friend, if you want to see a revival, let it not be all about your own self and your own needs and your desires, no matter how godly and righteous and holy they may be. But all that doesn't matter, doesn't even come close to the need that every soul in this town, in this country has to come to a knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ and his kingdom seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you but if you worship these things and you constantly ask God bless my path bless my decisions bless my needs bless my flesh bless my vision bless my burden you have lost it and you don't even know it your love has waxed cold you are neither hot nor cold but you look warm but I want to be hot for heaven for Lord Jesus Christ I want to know him and know him crucified people want to know him as in reacher and healer and deliverer but I want him I want to know him as the king of all I want to know that no matter what happens in my life, no matter where my life takes me, no matter what junk may happen in my life, no matter what tragedies, I want my faith to hold on to the cross of Christ that has rescued me from the, the wretched and nasty and evil and vile way of life. He has delivered me. Not so I would wear a suit and tie and preach pretty. He has not delivered delivered me to be a missionary he has delivered me because he wants you and I in heaven our end results and our end needs are not his his desire is to see us in heaven and he puts up with our desires he blesses us and moves in our presence and moves upon our heart because he loves us. Not because we made him, not because we deserve it, not because we can add anything to our salvation. But because his love endures forever. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. His desire that our home, that his home would become our home. In the name of Jesus, I come against every cancer, every tumor, every obsession, possession, impression, and imprint of evil spirits. In Jesus' name, I bind you and I lose deliverance and I lose peace and I lose joy and I lose operation of the gifts of the Spirit in this place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, somebody arise. Somebody stand upright, not in shame, not in doubt, but I want you to stand upright in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords our Jesus the Lamb that was crucified for your sin and my sin he lives again and where he is we shall also be I want to believe in healing I want to believe in deliverance but most of all I want to believe in the new kingdom in the new heaven in the new earth in the promise of eternal life that he has for me and you in Jesus name
somebody push yourself beyond the ceiling don't just lurk around not just touch on things and mention things but pray through somebody some of us have not prayed through in a while this is your chance this is your day step through all your disabilities and all your low self-esteem and all your doubts step through it and go beyond in the realm of the spirit in the realm of the authority of the word of God in the realm of the Holy Spirit revive us set us on fire set us free this gospel has been given to us freely and freely we give it away let it flow freely that never am I ashamed to witness about the love of God that never I am ashamed to speak of your name to anyone and everyone that will listen in Jesus name I impart gospel I impart the, the boldness to speak the gospel. Some of you will invite people to church, but you are afraid to say in Jesus' name, hallelujah. I impart boldness on you that you can step out of your comfort zone that you can speak of his glory and his love and the miracles he has done in your life this is not just for us it is for everyone and I will tell everyone and we will preach from the rooftops we will preach on the streets we will preach in our workplace we will preach in our schools because I am not a saint of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is power it is mighty it is dunamis it is explosive it is glorious God is in the business of changing people's lives in Jesus name in Jesus name let's give a Lord a hand clap In the last days, in these last days, pride has increased. There's not many, much humility left. It's all about me, it's for me, and know me, and follow me, and listen to me. But if we would decrease, we would allow him to increase. If we decrease our own self, our, our reputation, our, our rapport, and we don't care about what people think about us. Low self-esteem is our greatest enemy. Because we replace low self-esteem with other stuff that's just as bad. But Lord, you take away my hurt. You take care of my broken heart. You pull every root of bitterness out of my soul. And help me forgive. There are some things I can't forget. But I live in forgiveness by choice. I don't live in bitterness. If you want to grow, you have to forgive. And there's a lie of the devil. Oftentimes you're wrong about the people. And you think you have something to forgive, but you don't. Because it wasn't your business in the first place. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for a visitation of the Holy Spirit. For a visitation of the Comforter right now. That you would heal the broken hearts. That you would deliver us from depression, oppression, and anxiety. Which I bind and rebuke in Jesus' name. Demon of anxiety. You have no right here. You have no authority here. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. 
I lose peace of the Lord that comes from the throne of God. I lose peace as a river in this place. I lose peace as a river in this place. Instead of low self-esteem, we need something. We need confidence in who we are in Jesus Christ. Knowing that He who is righteous and holy God. I actually have only scriptures here. So the, this was not read to you. I want God to help you see yourself as He sees you. And when you do that, it don't matter what others think. It don't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what Instagram thinks of you. It don't matter. All that matters is how he sees me. And he loves me. And he sees me whole before I'm whole. And he sees me healed before I'm healed. And by faith I take the way he sees me. And I accept it as the truth for me. They may have told me I'm ugly. They may have told me I'm stupid. That I'll never accomplish anything. But I listen to your report. Yeah. Build in us understanding who we are in you. I'll say one more thing and this is very important because oftentimes I feel we don't understand it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a magic formula even the name of Jesus is not a magic name it is about understanding that we the church so not one person would be receiving glory for themselves but we are given different gifts and abilities and faith we when we say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I rebuke this sickness we are saying instead in his place I am his ambassador I'm his advocate and some of you tough men, you need to go into your house tonight and say, I am the master. I am the Lord of this house in Jesus name. I am the spiritual authority and protector of this house in Jesus name. In his stead. We are his hands. We are his feet in his stead. Now that calls for a lot of responsibility, doesn't it? That calls for a lot of fasting and prayer. And that's what God calls us to. To be his representatives on earth. So when you feel little, little lamb. When you feel insignificant. It is not a man who gave you this authority. It is not a, a group of people that gave you this authority. But when he give you illumination on his word and you had faith and desire to repent which all came from him Amen. he came to you he called you and you responded all right so when you get a hold of who you are in Christ nothing is impossible no weapons of warfare, sh warfare shall prosper. <laughs> For greater is he who is in me. Does that have, have a greater understanding now? Greater is he who is in me than one who is out in the world. And it's not a person who has authorized me. But when I receive the comfort, I receive my anointing. I receive my portion I received my truth and I received who I am in Jesus Christ all things are possible to those who believe I believe I believe baptize us with faith like we never had before 
to understand who we are in this world that who understand that we are your body we are the members we are the stones of a, a amazing building called church would you raise your hands with me one more time? Oh, the authority in the Holy Spirit is here. Take it. Take it by faith. Rise to another level in the Lord. Take the authority in Jesus' name. And not pray in authority. And pray in our authority. Not anymore as a child. But as a grown up. As a man and a woman of God. As someone who represents him on this earth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Your altar is where you stand. Hallelujah. Worship him for a few more minutes. The altar is where you are in your chair, in your seat. If you want to walk around, if you want to shout around, if you want to kneel, whatever you want to do, be free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come against demon, demons and powers and principalities that are coming against this ministry. That are coming against our health and our good reason and our mind. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we break every attack. We raise the shield of faith to break every lie. We break every curse and negativity spoken against us in Jesus' name. Oh, it doesn't matter what people think only matters where I'm going it doesn't matter my failures and, and, and broken heart all that matters is where I'm going so I press towards the mark I press towards the mark when they fall on the sidelines I'm gonna press towards the mark when others give up and give in I'm gonna press towards the mark for word is the land to receive glory and honor and power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.